I'm a small boy, look. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a big boy. Today we have a talk with uh, Mr. Marcos Rodriguez from Rage. Marcus, um, you're Spanish, you're living in Belgium. What's the, the history about that? <laughs> well, um, to make the long story short, yeah. um, I used to live the last 10 years of my life. No, not the last 10 years. I'm, I'm kidding. From 2000, from the year 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been living in Tenerife for you know, doing music out there. I have my own band uh, called Sound Chaser. Mm -hmm. And I play in Tenerife <coughs> for, uh, for 10 years. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I used to play a lot of covers and my original music as well. Uh, after that, I just moved to Belgium because I love this country. I've been in tour mm -hmm. in Europe with Sound Chaser and I get hooked to the Belgian food. Belgian food, <laughs> okay. So, and no, I love, I love the country. I just love yeah. the country. And I have some good friends here who help me out to find a, a flat and my stuff. And, uh, <clears throat> and I just moved here. Mm -hmm. And with my own band, Sound Chaser. And th so I've been playing here and there and everywhere. And I had the chance to open for Rage yeah. uh, in 2014 in, uh, in the 30th anniversary tour of Rage. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, I get the offer to play in the band and, and I say yes. And yeah. I'm still living in Belgium. Even if the Rage is a German band, but I'm still living in Belgium. You Belgium. are right. Full member of, of Rage yes, at the moment. I'm you are the, yes. the lead guitarist. Uh, yeah, I'm the only guitar player in the band. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm. I'm the full uh, member. Is my main job. Is is what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really happy to be in one of my favorite bands. I mean, I, I like Rage since I was 14, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> to be in this band is like a dream come true for me. And I never thought in my wildest dreams that I'm gonna be part of Rage. So. Yeah. It's crazy. Rage is known as the first band who had the guts, first metal band, who had the guts to uh, make a recording with a live orchestra. Yes. With a symphonic, uh, symphonic orchestra. Yes. What else is Rage for you? Well, uh, it's true. In 1996, they released the first metal band. It was the first metal band mm -hmm. doing an album with an orchestra. With a Prague Symphonic Orchestra, the album mm -hmm. was called Ingo Mortis, and uh, there was actually there was the first album I ever heard from Rage, and I thought it was some kind of metal band with a symphonic orchestra uh, thing, I mean mm -hmm. I never thought it was something real heavy, yeah. and then I get deep into the band and I discovered it was one of the greatest metal bands of all time, mm -hmm. uh, for me at least, and uh, for me Rage is my main influence, it's my life, I, uh, there is uh, every day I heard the band since I was like, like I said, like 14, 16 years old, mm -hmm. uh, or so. Actually, I have a tattoo of Rage that I that I nice. that I have since those days. It was my yeah. first tattoo, uh, and then you know, to be in Rage is like I, I've been there for two years already. I still cannot believe it. Yeah, <laughs> and. Um, you said it before, the, the days with uh, the Prague Orchestra was, uh, that's already 20 years behind us. Yes, absolutely. These days you guys are recording uh, a new album. What's the difference or what's the evolution between 20 years ago and now? Or Well, I can tell you this answer just as a fan because I've been in the band only for two years. <clears throat> well, yes, Lingua Mortis has 20 years. Uh, of history, mm -hmm. and uh, right now we just released an album yeah. uh, the, the past June mm -hmm. 2016. Yeah. Uh, it's called The Devil Strikes Again, and it's definitely an album uh, that I've been missing from Rage for many years. Mm -hmm. Because, Why? well, because uh, the last the last 15 years or so, the bands changed a lot into a direction that I wasn't that happy. Mm -hmm. With that, you know, I, I, it was. I love them, all those albums, but yeah. uh, it was a different style of was the real, the real rage it was before. Mm -hmm. So now it is more focused into the metal uh, phase, 
than the prog prog mm -hmm. stuff because it was also with orchestra with more prog metal, yeah. uh, which is okay, but it wasn't the real essence of rage. Mm -hmm. And right now we're back to the roots. We're back to the the band is back to the roots. It's back to the real metal straight in your face yeah. thing, and I really like it a lot. Um, symphonic uh, part of Rage is gonna happen, not right now, right mm -hmm. now we are very focused in, in Rescue, somehow you can say that, Rescue with this pure metal in your face style, mm -hmm. uh, but the symphonic things uh, are there, are there and uh, they're gonna be released sometime soon, <coughs> not right now. Yeah. But uh, at least in, in, in a few years we were thinking about it. I mean, even the label Metal Glass, yeah. uh, they say that we have to do something with the uh, symphonic orchestra, with the Lingua Mortis Orchestra. Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen, but not anytime soon. It's going to happen in the, in the future. Okay. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, you guys played at a Lost Fest. Yes. Um, great show, by the way. Thank you. The, the pure metal was uh, was all out Yes, there. yes. But what, what, uh, what I noticed, and kind of surprised me was that uh, the same day when you guys played, you were there and you were uh, together with PV in the crowd and, and watching other bands play. Yes. And then again, the next day, Trusted Corner was playing. Absolutely. I know you guys have been touring together, but you weren't playing at Olos Fest. Still, you were back there, you were watching other bands. Sure. Uh, is, is that something you do? Um, on purpose, or is that something that you just do as music lovers, or what? Well, especially in that festival, in other festivals, uh, I'm, I'm somehow involved with the organization of the festival. Mm -hmm. You know, they, uh, they have Krisa, which are the, yeah. the main organizers. They also, I've been, I've been playing in other festivals for three years in a row. Uh, with different bands, Sound Chaser, My Tribute to Deal, and uh, Deal Legacy, and Brave Now. Yeah. Uh, somehow I'm like a part of the Olin's Fest family, you know, so yeah. I, I've been always involved. With it. Uh, so I go every time to Olin's Fest, not just to play, but also to enjoy the bands. Mm -hmm. Trice Connor, of course, our drummer is the singer of Trice Connor. Yeah. The Rage drummer is the singer of Trice Connor, lucky. So, uh, <coughs> being there, supporting them, as brothers we are, Yep. It's all, always good, but also we enjoyed a lot of the of the of the lineup of the festival this year. Mm -hmm. They have Nazareth, they have Leaf Scar, which is a Belgian band that I truly love. Uh, they have uh, many many other good bands, and uh, mm -hmm. they have Fire Force. Uh, you know all these bands that I like. So I say let's enjoy the festival. Yeah. But it's true that I'm involved somehow in the organization of the festival. You know, it's trying to find some good bands and trying to to help them out a little bit with the, the request of the people, you know, there are so many bands who want to play there, so I advise that promote, yeah. the promote how they can get, and also Lucky Bob, which is the, the, the manager mm -hmm. uh, of Rage, is also an agency, a, a management agency, is involved in all these fest. Okay. So, so most of the bands, uh, no most of the bands, but a lot of bands from Lucky Bob are playing in this festival as well. Yeah. That's cool. We're sitting here in uh, this great, Music shop, uh, music instrument shop. Yes. Um, if I look to, uh, to the guitars behind us, this, this, the first question uh, that pops to mind is: as a musician, yes. How do you choose your guitar? Is it just passion? Is it technical stuff? Is it feeling? Is it's it business? No, no, no. <laughs> well, actually, how I choose my guitars? I mean, I don't choose the guitar. The guitar I choose. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Harry Potter, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, that's true. I mean, I'm, I'm working since uh, three years with ESP. Yeah. It's, as you know, it's a Japanese brand. Uh, it's, it's, it's a metal reference, you know, James Hetfield. Mm -hmm. I mean, Metallica and Anthrax and all these people use uh, ESP. Yeah. Uh, and for me, it's one of the most uh, standard premium guitars, you know, mm -hmm. for metal. It's really good. And uh, of course, I'm using right now sort of a model like this one, the E2, something yeah. like that, but in that color. <laughs> in oh, like so a black, in the black and gold. In black and gold. So yeah. the Eclipse 2 E2 is a ESP made in Japan. It's such a beautiful guitar. This is one of the of the brands that I really like, and uh, and I'm using some other guitars, but I'm I'm working with ESP. And I'm really happy with them. Really, really happy with them. Soon I'm gonna get a new guitar yeah. uh, from them, uh, and 
is, is, is the guitar for me, for metal. For metal, it's fantastic. And if you decide which guitar you're gonna buy, um, do you stick with the guitar as it is out of the factory, or do you start fiddling with it and, and yeah, well, changing components and stuff like that? Yeah, this is pretty much like a car. When they deliver a guitar, I don't I don't do too many things. I mean, the things that I do is just uh, put in it, I'm adjusted to the tuning that I'm using in Rage, which is one step down. Just yeah. drop this in D, and and I just, of course, I do the adjustment to be in a perfect shape. And then the only custom thing that I do with the guitar is I try different pickups all the time, yeah. put in new pickups and try to find a good sound. But the ones that they deliver are really good right now. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I put uh, on the guitar that I customize is a kill switch that yeah. I have on my tone uh, because uh, previous songs of a previous lineup they use this kind of effect so I mm -hmm. just to, to play them live the way it was written I just use this kind of stuff but pretty much I use the guitars uh, the way they come from the box uh, they are fantastic guitars and, and it's true the advice that I can say to any any guitar player out there a musician who's trying new guitar just try it as much as you can and the guitar will choose you mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what in, in your mind, what's the most important part of the guitar to, in, in determining the sounds? Is it the wood that's made of? Is it the pickups? Is it the strings? Well, it's, it's everything. Even the tuners are important. The tuners, yeah. the knot, the bridge, the, everything is important on a guitar. To me, uh, one of the most important things is the, the, the wood and the... Uh, how do you say that in English? Uh, the neck. Uh, yeah. Facilities. I mean, if it's too thick, if it's too thin, the neck. Comf uh, you have to be comfortable with the neck, yeah. especially in the music that I play, which is speed, fast metal. If you have a really thick neck, for me that I have a really small hand, yeah. sometimes it turns difficult. But it's more for men. If you if you have a guitar like that, you know, with a thick neck, and you can, you know, rub the shit out of it. Yeah. But uh, it it's only depends. It's every every person is an onward. But for me, the neck is very important. The, the wood, uh, the, the action of the strings, mm -hmm. the knot, the tuner, if it's a good tuner and doesn't get out of tune or, or not, this is all the stuff that you have to take care of. But it's only a matter of sit down, try and try and try and try and, and then choose what you want to Yeah, and if you buy a, a new guitar, yes. and let's say that new guitar has a totally different sound as your previous guitar, mm -hmm. you stick with the same uh, amplifiers or stuff like that? Well, it depends. I mean, I have I have uh, the three guitars that I use live are uh, the Clips, uh, the Clips E2 that I have it here. The other one that I use is a Horizon 3, which is a, with Chloe Rose. It's a different wood, it's a different wave, it's a different pickups. And I use the third guitar, which is a narrow, which is sort of V shape. Yeah. It's narrow also for me as speed. Of course, these three guitars have th three different sounds. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I have is I have a pedal board would have uh, a lot of kind of uh, pedals on it, like compressors and boosters and stuff like that. So it depends on the guitar. Mm -hmm. I change the, the parameters, I mean, of the, of, I change the, the set of, of the yeah. pedals. But what I use is the angle amps, which yeah. we have in here behind the angle amps, yeah. and those amps are made for metal, I mean, and for rock. I mean, especially the Fireball and the Powerball and the Iron Ball and the Rock Master, the Metal Master, those amps are made for metal. And they just sound unbelievably amazing, aggressive, mm -hmm. punchy, deep. It's perfect. So uh, it doesn't matter which guitar, which model of guitar you have plugged yeah. in. It's gonna, it's gonna rock. Yeah. It's gonna rock for sure. And of course, but yes, some some little things in there that you have to to, to change, like some pedals, some boosters, some colors, some delays, some you know, there's a bit of everything. But yeah. but the main thing is if you can add an ESP to an angle amp. <laughs> it's gonna rug your socks out of it, you know. That's really good. Okay, great. Um, I know you guys are leaving for uh, Japan next week. Yeah, next week. Um, we're going to Japan. With Rage. Yes. Woo! For people who want to see you play in Belgium, I believe it's with uh, one of your other bands, but you are playing in Antwerp and Kortrijk. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, with Rage uh, next week, I mean, uh, my schedule for this October is. Uh, we're going. We're off to Japan to play in Loud Park, one of the most prestigious festivals in the world. We're yeah. we're, we're gonna play there uh, with Rage, and then after that, I'm coming back, and I'm going to Spain uh, also with Rage. Two mm -hmm. gigs that we have there in Zaragoza and Valladolid mm -hmm. uh, in Spain, 
And after that, uh, the 22nd and the 23rd of October, uh, I'm playing with Iron Mask. Actually, I have it here, Iron Mask. I'm singing with my brother Dushan from Iron Mask. Um, the 22nd on, on Antwerp in the Rocking Rocking Bull. Rocking Bull. Yeah. Thank you for that. And in country in, uh, in the Grün. In the, in the Grün. Exactly. Yeah. Out there. Uh, with Iron Mask Company from YNT. This is a band that uh, I really like, Iron Mask. And uh, sometimes the singer lives in Argentina. Yeah. So uh, sometimes it's like a quick gig. They, they book and for flying things, the singer can open. And I, I'm free those days. And mm -hmm. Dushin and I, we have a really nice relation. And uh, he asked me if I want to join them. And it's a pleasure for me to, to sing with our mask, a band that I truly love. So yeah. that's good. Right, Marcus? Uh, Marcos, sorry. Marcos, that's Marcos. right. <laughs> um, yeah, trying to speak, trying to say an English, uh, Spanish name in English. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it's confusing. Sometimes confusing, yes. Um, thank you very much for this talk. And, uh, no problem, man. Good luck in Japan, in Spain. Thank you. And thank you. we'll see you again back in Belgium. Yes, that's right. Thank you for the interview. You're welcome. Ooh.